Located near Bidwell Ranch in the Hat Creek Valley, HCRO is used by astronomers all over the world to study the universe at radio frequencies. The Hat Creek Observatory was established in 1959 following a search for a large, flat, accessible site free from low-frequency radio interference. Construction of a radio telescope 85 feet in diameter began in 1960 and was completed two years later. The 85-foot telescope was a major landmark in the valley and could be seen from Highway 89. The locals would refer to it as the Big Punch Bowl or the Big Saucer. Few had a clear idea of what it was doing out there in the lavas. This is an optical picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. It is nearby by astronomical standards and is much like our own Milky Way. It is a pinwheel of stars mainly confined to a flat disk due to its rapid rotation. Between the stars is hydrogen gas, dust, and a variety of molecules. Only the stars are visible to our eyes. A radio telescope is needed to see the cold gas and dust between them. In 1963, the 85-foot began an ambitious project to measure the distribution of hydrogen gas in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Hydrogen is the lightest element in the universe and also the most abundant. It makes up 90% of the matter in the universe and is the stuff from which stars are made. This image, created by Berkeley astronomer Carl Hylas with the 85-foot antenna, shows the H1 distribution in the disk of the Milky Way. At about this time, another Berkeley professor was experimenting with much smaller telescopes operating at much higher frequencies. Jack Welch was interested in seeing what else might be out there, and in the late 60s discovered the first two polyatomic molecules in space, NH3, ammonia, and H2O. This picture shows how we moved antennas from station to station in order to vary the distance between them and simulate a large antenna. At a given spacing, the Earth's rotation was used to vary the orientation of the baseline over an eight-hour observing period. M87 is a giant galaxy in the nearby Virgo cluster of galaxies. The fuzzy white blob shown here is an optical photograph of the starlight. Unlike Andromeda and the Milky Way, M87 is elliptical in shape. It is especially interesting because it contains a massive black hole at its center. By process still not well understood, twin beams of energy are ejected from the black hole. The insert is the Hat Creek image of the radio emission, which covers an area of about 16,000 light years across. It took a full year to make this image, which required moving the antennas to 26 different locations. Radio emissions of some objects look much like their optical images, as in this radiogram of Saturn. The radio emission from Saturn is thermal radiation, with red indicating the warmest and blue the coolest parts of the planet. The rings are blue because they are colder than the surface of Saturn, which shows up as red. The yellow stripe near the top of the disk is caused by cold material in the rings absorbing the warmer radiation from the disk. Unlike Saturn, the radio emission from Jupiter is dominated by synchrotron emission. This is the same radiation process which produces the radio lobes in M87. It is caused by energetic electrons spiraling around magnetic field lines. In 1980, construction of a third antenna began following a design developed at Berkeley. The addition of this antenna added not one but two extra baselines or pairs of antennas, resulting in a three-fold increase in the speed of the array. The M87 image, which took 12 months in 1977, would only take four months. On September 2, 1987, the Lost Creek Fire started by lightning in the lava south of the observatory. The fire spread through the valley and nearly engulfed the observatory. 23,000 acres of forest was lost in the Lost Fire. No serious damage to the telescopes or buildings at the observatory occurred thanks to the heroic efforts by the CDF, USFS, the Volunteer Fire Department, and the staff of HCRO. Around this time, Berkeley formed a consortium with the Universities of Maryland and Illinois in order to expand the array further. The plan was to build a nine-element array using seven new telescopes and two of the old ones. This resulted in a new name for the array, BEMA, 
for the Berkeley, Illinois, Maryland Association. By January 1993, four of the new antennas were commissioned and the six element array began operation. The number of simultaneous baselines was now 15, a factor of five increase in the speed of the three element array. In the winter of 1993, a freak storm produced 100 mile per hour vertical winds in the meadow of the Hat Creek Observatory. The wind lifted the 85 foot antenna's surface out of its bearings and blew it off its mount. The 85 foot had survived over 30 years of continuous service and its destruction was a great blow to Hat Creek Observatory and to the scientific community. It was decided that instead of rebuilding the 85 foot antenna, two more 20 foot antennas would be built. This allowed the oldest two antennas to retire and brought the number of antennas in the array to 10. The next development at the observatory was the installation of remote stations connected by fiber optics. This effort was led by Professor Lee Mundy at the University of Maryland. The addition of remote stations allowed the array to extend beyond the 1,000 by 600 foot size of the T. Fiber optics was needed because the distance from the antennas to the correlator became too great for efficient transmission on copper cable. This is a view from inside one of the 20-foot telescope receiver cabins. The receiver is located behind a hole in the middle of the dish where the radio waves are focused. This is called the secondary focus because radiation first bounces off the main 20-foot reflector and then off a second reflector to be redirected into the cabin. Here again is a picture of M87 with 45 simultaneous baselines the BEMA array was able to create this image in just one 8-hour integration period. Notice that the resolution is higher than our original picture of M87, which took over a year to make. The completed 10-element BEMA array produced new results not possible before, but at these shorter wavelengths the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere above Hat Creek became a problem. For this reason, the millimeter ray has been relocated to a higher elevation site in a drier location. It will join six telescopes from the Owens Valley Radio Observatory, operated by Caltech, to make a new array called KARMA, or Combined Array for Research in Millimeter Wave Astronomy. Presently, a revolutionary new telescope operating at lower frequencies is being built at HCRO. The ATA, or Allen Telescope Array, will eventually include 350 new radio dishes. It is a joint project between UC Berkeley and the SETI Institute. The Allen Telescope Array is an array of antennas which can be simultaneously used for both SETI and cutting-edge radio astronomy research. Because it will have the ability to study many areas on the sky at once, with more channels, and for 24 hours a day, the Allen Telescope Array will permit an expansion of SETI stellar reconnaissance to 100,000 or even 1 million nearby stars. Virtually all radio SETI experiments have looked for what are called narrow band signals. These are radio emissions that are at one spot on the radio dial. Imagine tuning your car radio late at night. There's static everywhere on the band, but suddenly you hear a squeal, a signal at a particular frequency and you know you've found a station. Narrow band signals are the mark of a purposely built transmitter. Natural cosmic noise makers such as pulsars, quasars, and the turbulent thin interstellar gas of our own Milky Way do not make radio signals that are this narrow. The static from these objects is spread all across the dial. We believe that ET will use narrow band signals as beacons to get our attention. The move to Karma and the construction of the ATA means a great deal of activity at HCRO. Visitors should pay attention to signs and stay on designated paths. Someone will now usually be available to answer questions and give a description of the facility. Thank you for visiting Hat Creek Observatory. <laughs>